saints to minister before the Lord and the young people and the preachers preach and people come and praise God. Uh, this is our third service of the day. And uh, we're going to start off with a prayer. Precious God, we thank you, Lord. And we pray that you would bless this service as you have blessed the services all day. Let the Spirit of God continue to be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to have a song of praise by some of the young people. Praise the Lord. Thank God for everyone who's able to make it out tonight. I know that everybody has trials and tribulations. And everyone needs someone to lean on. Family and friends will come to me for help, advice, and they'll say, they'll say, oh brother, keep me strong, they don't know that I'm barely holding on, they say brother, stop me from falling off the edge, they don't know that I'm on my last leg, they say brother, keep me steady, Say, brother, I wanna be rich. They don't even know that I'm falling on my face. Yeah. But I say, Lord, it's your love that keeps me going. It's your love that keeps me going. Lord. It's your love that keeps me going. Be 
please. Giving honor to the Most High for being the head of our lives. Giving honor to Bishop LT for being the shepherd of our lives. Giving honor to you all for being the light, precious faith. Amen. If you have your Bibles, the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. And we'll bow our heads to bless the reading of the word. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and for your keeping power. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Minister to our hearts, Lord, and our minds. Help us to be zealous of good works and keep our heart, Lord, in the mind of repentance. And commit the keeping of our souls in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And be holy in all manner of living. Purge our hearts and our minds that the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving will be acceptable. Lord, unto you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. Amen. Just a short word of exhortation. I want to talk to you how to deal with impossible situations. How to deal with impossible situations. Things that uh, uh, take place in your life and you feel like it is completely impossible. Now, in situations may vary from one person to the next. Like when the disciples came to Jesus and they were talking about how often should I forgive my brother and sister? And Jesus looked at them and said, 70 times 7. And the disciples said, then, you know, this is impossible. Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said that with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And when you, got, when you get to a place where you can understand that with God all things are possible, it will help you in your trying time and you through your impossible situation. That you can lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily beset you and you can take upon him because he said that his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. And God said that we can call upon him and that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You can call on Jesus because a lot of times we forget to use the powerful tool that God has given us and that is prayer. That is prayer. Because in the world you're going to have tribulation but Jesus said to be of good cheer because he has already overcome. And in your trying time, there are times when you're going to feel like you have been backed into a corner. You feel like situations coming at you and you feel like you're backed out into a corner. Now, a lot of people in the world that don't know God will say, well, I snapped. I didn't know what to do. I had to use my first defense mechanism. But you can't do that with God. Because when the spirit of the Lord is in you, then you ought to know that with God, all things are possible. In the book of Second Chronicles, in a uh, very familiar uh, 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 portion of the scriptures, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, after this also, that the children of Moab, and the children of Ammon, and the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be with Hazan, Tamar, which is and en en Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast toward all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Uh, not thou, our God, which did drive out the inhabitants of the land before thy people Israel, and gave us the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built there a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If, when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment or pestilence or famine, we stand before this house, 
and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house a cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. And now behold, the enemy, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of the possession which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. He felt like the enemy was coming and that it was too many of them that were coming against them. And he's looking at, at themselves and figuring that we don't have enough to overpower them. You know, when um, when Gideon brought all, all the men that were going to go to fight, God said, I'm not going to let you go fight with the whole multitude. Let the people who vaunt themselves and think that they have won the battle by the work of their own hands. So sometimes the Lord will allow those things that you lean on and depend on. He will remove them so you have nowhere else to turn to but to turn to the Lord. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones and their wives and their children. Then upon Zahir, Jehazah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benad, the son of Jehiel, the son of Matthias, a Levite of the sons of Asa, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. They began to pray. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon a Levite. In the midst of the congregation, they were seeking the face of the Lord and they were talking to God about the trouble that they were about to encounter. And while they were praying, there was a Levite there in the midst. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon the Levite, and this is what he said Hearken ye, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. One of the ways to overcome impossible situations, you got to get rid of your fears. You got to get rid of your fears. When you feel like you're backed up against the world, that the enemy is coming, you got to get rid of your fears. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. You got to get rid of your fears because God can't work through fear and doubt. When Moses went and he was leading the children out of Israel, when he went to, and, and he convinced the children that God has sent him to tell Pharaoh that I am that I am, has said, let my people go. Initially, when God talked to Moses, Moses said, the people would not believe me. They're not going to believe that God has sent me. But Moses went and convinced through miracles that God allowed him to do in the presence of Pharaoh. And he led the people out with a mighty hand. But when he was leading the people and they got close to the Red Sea, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh and his army and his chariots began to come and pursue after the children of Israel. When the children of Israel saw the company of Pharaoh, they began to be afraid and they began to speak to Moses on this wise. Why did we not tell you? This is why we kept telling you, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians. Now you have brought us into the wilderness to die over here as though there were not enough graves in Egypt. Look, they are coming, they're, gonna to, they're going to destroy us. Why would you let us, why did you bring us with the money hand to come and die over here? Wouldn't it have been better for us to stay where we were and serve the Egyptians and continue to live and die in the, in the land of bondage? And God spoke to Moses. He said, this is what I want you to tell the people. Fear not. He said, fear not. Stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. All these Egyptians that you see coming, but tomorrow you will see them no more. 
Moses had to speak to the people and encourage them to get rid of their fear because God was leading them. We walk by faith and not by sight. All they saw was that trouble is coming and now we're here. We can't walk on we can't walk on water and here trouble is coming. The Egyptians and Pharaoh is coming and we have been backed into a corner. What are we going to do? Moses looked at them and said, first thing you got to do is get rid of your fear. Fear not. And you will see the salvation of the Lord. All these Egyptians that you see that are coming, that are pursuing after us, you won't see them anymore. And God told Moses to lift up the staff. He picked it up and the Red Sea split. You got to get rid of one the first thing you got to do in, in the impossible situations is to get rid of your fear. Because your fear will cause you to jump ahead of time. It will cause you to put your hands in it. It will cause you to make haste situations without God. Get rid of your fear. God said the God unto you, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Don't look at the situation and allow your heart to faint. For the battle is not yours, but the Lord. The battle is not yours, but the battle belongs to God. Verse 16, it said, now tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jero. The hireling will flee, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When you're dealing with impossible situation, you've got to be willing to walk by faith. You've got to get rid of your fears, and then you got to walk by faith. You got to put your hands unto the plow and continue to move forward in the name of the Lord. Tomorrow go ye down against them. You're going to face your enemy. How are you going to face your enemy? How are you going to face your situation? By faith. When there was famine in Israel, the king Elijah, God spoke to the king and he said, tomorrow by this time I'm going to pour plenty in the Samaria. But there were four lepers that were there. They had no food. They they know what to do. But this is what they said. We're going to get up and go into the enemy's camp. If they if they, if they they kill us, if they, if they kill us, it's all right. But if they save us alive, it will be okay because if we sit here and do nothing, we are going to die. Why sit here and die? We're going to go and walk by faith into the enemy's camp. You got to be willing to walk by faith. You got to be willing to show works in your, in your faith walk. They decided to walk by faith and they went into the enemy's camp by faith. Those four lepers went and went to Samaria. When they got there, the Lord had caused a, a, a trouble over there, and the people had left all their goods. They had left all their spoil, and they ran up. And when the four lepers got there, all the food had been left there for them to, to absorb. Because God has no pleasure with them that draw back. You got to be willing to go forward in Christ Jesus. When you're dealing with the impossible situation, you got to be willing to go forward and not backwards. He said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head to his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. The other way you got to do it,
to face impossible situations, you got to go into prayer. Jesus showed us when he went to the mountain, when they were coming to get him. He said, when his time is nigh. So he took with them Simon Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he, when they got to a certain place, he told them to sit here and pray while I go yonder and, and pray unto the Lord. And you all remember the story how when Jesus came back, he looked at them and they were sleeping and he would say, could you watch with me one hour? He said, watch as well as pray that you enter not into temptation. And he came back again and they were asleep for sorrow. And Jesus went and he prayed. And the Bible says that being in agony because he knew what was about to happen. Being in agony, he said he prayed earnestly. And they felt like drops of blood or sweat was coming down his face. And the angel of the Lord came to strengthen him. You got to go before the Lord in prayer and pray earnestly that God deliver you and God answer your prayer. 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 David, when he was running from Absalom, he had sinned with Bathsheba, and now he was running because Absalom was trying to take over the kingdom and was trying to kill David. Now, Ahithophel, who was the right-hand man of David, whose wisdom was like the wisdom of God, had turned on against David and went with Absalom. Now one of the young men came and said, I listen, David, Ahithophel has conspired against you and is with Absalom who's trying to kill you. And David felt so terrible. He was like, oh man, Ahithophel has turned on me. But David went to prayer. David went and prayed before the Lord. And he said, Lord, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Please, and he said, he prayed and he prayed unto the Lord and he said, Lord, turn this man's counsel into foolishness. And while he was still praying, guess who came by? Hushea walks by, comes by, and David said, now if you come with me, you're going to be of no profit. Do me a favor, I want you to go back down to Absalom and act like you are on his side. Right, right as soon as he, he, he prayed to the Lord, and asked the Lord to turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness, here comes his answer of prayer. Hushai comes walking. David looks at him and says, listen, I want you to go because Ahithophel is conspired against me and is with Absalom. I want you to go and pretend that you are on his side and listen to what they are about to say and peradventure, you can overturn you can overturn the counsel of Ahithophel. And we all remember the story. He gave counsel, and then Absalom looked at Hushai and he said, Hushai, what do you think? And he said, the counsel of Ahithophel is not good because your father is a man of war and they got armies. It would not, well, how would it look if you descend on them? They are mighty men of war. And Absalom said, the, the counsel of Hushai seems pretty good. And when he said that, Ahithophel realized that the Lord had allowed this to take place to overturn his counsel. So what did he do? He went back to his house, got his house, his house in order, and hung himself. Prayer. Prayer. Remember the story of Hannah. Hannah needed a blessing because God had shut up her womb. She needed an impossible. She had. She was in an impossible situation. Her Penina had children, but the Lord had shut up her womb and she kept going to her husband. And her husband kept saying, you more to me more than ten sons. But Penina kept vexing her, kept vexing her soul. So she decided, I need an impossible blessing. And so what she did was she went to the temple and she began to pour her heart out unto the Lord. And she prayed and she prayed and then she prayed. And eventually the priest marked her. And he said, are you full of new wine? She said, no, I'm not full of new wine. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I need a blessing from God. And as she continued to pray, as she continued to pray, as she continued to pray, the priest marked her and he said, go on because next year about this time, the Lord shall bless you, shall give you the desires of your heart. The Lord shall grant you your petition. 
Lord shall grant you your petition. Abraham, you remember the story. Abraham, God tempted Abraham. And when God tempted Abraham, he said, I want you to take your only son. And I want you to sacrifice him. And so Abraham took his son Isaac. And he took some of the young men. And they got to a certain point. He told, the, he told his servants, listen, you stay here. And me and my son are going to go over yonder. And so he took the, the, the wood and the fire and laid it on the back of his son. And the son looked at him. Isaac looked at Abraham. And, Abra and he said, listen, father, I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? And Abraham looked at him and he said, the Lord, God will provide. God will provide. God will provide the sacrifice. The Lord will provide a ram for the sacrifice. The Lord will provide. You are in an impossible situation. Just give it to the Lord and say the God will provide. That the Lord will provide. Because with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. The Bible says that Elijah was a man subject unto like passions as we are. But he prayed earnestly that it might not rain for the space of three years and it rained not. He said that he prayed earnestly and the rains came. Prayed earnestly and the rains came. God has given us, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You gotta get rid of your fears and walk and live in the spirit. When you talk to Peter, Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And, and Jesus said, Come. And Peter began to walk on water. And there was a boisterous, there was the, uh, the storm. And he looked at the storm and he began to sing. Jesus, and he cried out, he said, Lord, save me. And Jesus stretched out his hand and said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? It is an impossible situation. But you're looking at me. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When they were on the boat and the storm came, the people cried unto the Lord. And they said, Lord, do you not care if we perish? Jesus looked at them and he said, oh, you have little faith. You got to have faith the size of a mustard seed. They looked at Jesus and they said, Lord, do you not care if we pray? Jesus woke up and he said, O ye of little faith. And Jesus rebuked the storm. And the people marveled and they said, What manner of man is this that even the winds obey his command? Dealing with impossible situations. Ask the Lord to increase your faith. Ask God to increase your faith. And you got to get rid of all your fears. You got to get rid of your fears because we, you know, that will stop God. And then you got to have a prayer life, consecrate, and be able to pray earnestly, earnestly. Because it's God who hears, not only hears, but He answers prayers. He will answer even by fire. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We believe in God for the impossible. Amen. The brother started off that were correct talking about uh, Jehoshaphat mm -hmm. and how the enemy came against him and how that God said the battle's not yours, but it's the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up talking about Moses and the children of Israel, how they were uh, leaving out of Egypt and Pharaoh was pursuing them. The Egyptians, the, the children of Israel were crying, saying we could have stayed in Egypt. But they need to understand, they didn't know, as we know now, that the foreknowledge of God knows all things. And those whom God knew before time, he predestined. He went ahead of them to amen, to make a way. So as the brother was saying, in order to get into the realm of the impossible, amen, we must 
we, we must leave, in order to get into that realm of the impossible, we must realize that all things with God are possible. And to us, it is impossible. But when we get into the spirit, amen, that which is impossible becomes possible with God. But you have to trust in God. You see, what the children of Israel did not know was that they did not go to the Red Sea by mistake. But God spoke to Moses. He said, I want you to take this path and lead the children of Israel to this certain path, a man between the waters. He said, and then the Egyptians will say they are stuck at the sea and there's no way out. There's no way possible they can escape. And God said, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. And him thinking that there was no possibility for Israel to escape. When Pharaoh comes, God said, I'm going to take you from the possible and impossible, and I'm going to lead you into the possible by having faith in God. But when we have faith in God, that which is impossible with man becomes possible with God. So the children of Israel were not trapped. But the Egyptians, oh, but the Egyptians were. Because God had already went before them. You're not trapped. Let go of your fears, the preacher said. But the enemy is. We believe in the impossible. Because we trust in God. And that which is impossible to us becomes possible. When we say impossible, we mean to man. But when we put our faith in God, that impossible becomes possible. Joshua was fighting the battle, and he was on fire. And he was beating the enemy. Oh, thank God for what we call the impossible prayer. That becomes possible with God. And the time was running out. And the Bible says Joshua did something that no man ever did before. Because he didn't want the enemy, praise God, to get away. The Bible says Joshua looked to the sun. And he said, son, be still. And the impossible became a possibility because God heard it. And he had still the sun. It was such an impossible prayer for man that God said he never again would hearken to man. So we get rid of our fears. And that which is impossible to us, as the preacher says, when we get into that realm of faith, the impossible, now in the hands of God, becomes possible. It becomes possible. The impossible, when we trust in God, becomes possible. God had already set it up. You see, we don't always know what God has done. That's why we should always have faith and always believe. You see, it was a strategy. God told Moses to lead them there. And he said, they will think one way. God said, but I'll move another. And so we thank God for that word. Amen. God is the God of the impossible. That is the impossible to us. But when we put it in the hands of God and we get rid of our fears, that which is impossible becomes the possible. And we, I feel a small virtue. We thank God for that word. To always know, praise God, as he said, we don't walk by faith, but by, we don't walk by sight, but by faith. And as Jesus said to the disciples, they said, who then can be saved? He said, with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things. Possible. With us, it is impossible. But with him, all things. With us, it seemeth impossible. But with him, all things are possible. With us, it may be impossible. But with him, all things are possible if you believe and he wants you to believe he wants your impossibility to turn into the possible he wants you to trust in him so we thank God for that word and remember let go of your fears and your doubts 
Because with God, all things are all things. So when you get into that impossible situation, get into the realm of faith. Get into the realm of the spirit. And you'll find out that your impossible becomes possible in the hands of the Lord. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand for a fall. That is a virtue. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him. Have the faith of God. Thank God for his word. All things are possible. Get rid of your fear. Get rid of your doubt. Because all things are possible. So we come from the realm of impossibility. Get into the spirit to the realm of a God bless you.